Hello Explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna continue learning about Linux. Now we need to install another programming language and what's next? It's Python. We have built it before. Now we need to build it for the, the system that we are going to run. So this is the real Python build we're gonna do. And uh, we need to configure it with some flags. USR as usual, the, the directory we will enable shared. So that's the same as disable static. We will create shared libraries. Uh, we will use the system XPAT and the system FFI libraries that we have built. And we with ensure pip, yes. And that stands for building pip and system tool package packaging programs. Yeah, so pip is the uh, Python uh, program that you use to install packages, Python packages in your system. So it's a package manager for Python. So that's very useful to have. So let's configure this and uh, hopefully that will not take that much time. We don't have any tests to run for Python. We just need to make it and uh, it will take one SPU to run. So uh, when this configuration step is done, I will type make and run that and I'll get back to you when it actually is built. And we are back, so we have uh, made Python, we need to run make install to install it into our system. Then we need to actually change the permissions of two of the libraries. So we have a lib Python 3.7m SO and 3.so that needs to be executable. So we need to change the permissions of these and the test suite uh, TX and the X window system cannot be run until Python 3 is reinstalled in BLF. Yes, okay. So that's something that we need to do later, but uh, just for using it in our first environment here, we just need to install these. It, actually compiles a lot of things when you run make install. That's interesting. But it's a lot of Python scripts that are compiled, not the uh, actual Python language that is already compiled. So let's see here if it's done perhaps after this step here. It will create some links. It created a setup tool and collecting pip. So now when it has installed these, we need to change the permission of these two libraries that I talked about. So they are executable. And then we need to run install for adding the documentation like that. And then we can actually unpack this documentation, but it's not in that directory, it's two down. So we will tar strip components, no same owner, no same permissions into that directory for this documentation. So the no same owner, no same permission ensures that the install files have the correct ownership and permissions. Without these options, tar will install the package files with upstream creators values. So this will strip down all the permissions in the tar file and set the system permissions for that directory. So let's unpack the documentation. Now we have it there. So we will get Python 3 in this and we also have some other Python related programs that we installed. So let's go on with another compiler -y thing. Um, so this is a build system and it's called Ninja. So a build system is something that will uh, use the compiler and a lot of scripts in order to create programs. CMake, Make are such systems. This Ninja is another one. So uh, 
it's focused on speed and first off we need to set the number of jobs to four so we will use four processes I guess and then we can if desired uh, add the capability to use the environment variable ninja jobs by running so this is what we do to actually activate that environment variable that we set there number of jobs and it will add that into the ninja cc file and to build ninja we use python to bootstrap the configure so we run that uh, this is a small file a small uh, system so it only will take 0.2 spus and the bootstrap parameter focuses Ninja to rebuild itself for the current system. So that's why we are using bootstrap. So let's see here. Bootstrapping Ninja should not take that much time. So now we have built Ninja and to uh, run the test results, we will run this configure script again. And when that's done, we will run Ninja with the Ninja test, and that will build the Ninja test file <laughs> or Ninja test uh, executable. And then we can run that executable with a gstest parameter in order to check that it actually built a valid program. Um, so that's an interesting little way of testing this <laughs> and it tested it really fast and it passed. So let's install Ninja into the USR bin directory and we need to install a script for bash completion and bash completion is that stuff that Ninja knows about. So Ninja can have different commands or different uh, ways of actually calling Ninja. That this bash completion uh, com added added value is that it knows what Ninja can do. So if you're in your shell with bash, you added the different logics for Ninja. So when you run Ninja and just type uh, tab, it will actually give you some suggestions on different commands you can run. So bash completions are really good. And you can also install uh, completions for the, oh, that's what's the bash again. Let's see here, for the uh, ZH um, compilation. So that's for a different one. ZH is not something that we have installed or used, but we can do. It's another one of those. Um, so let's go for the next package. This is the Maison. And what's Maison? It's an open source build system meant to be both extremely fast and even more importantly, as user friendly as possible. So it's very like the Ninja package, just another one of those. So we will build uh, compile Mezen with the following command, and then we need to run this command to install it. It will install it into the destination folder, and then we need to copy that from the destination folder into slash so it will be actually be moving everything over there um, the meson usr bin so that's what we did there we have the meson highly con product productivity build system a tool for configuring meson builds and so on i haven't used meson and i haven't really used ninja either but I think I will try to uh, use them in the future and figure out how to run Ninja and what the benefits are by 
I either choosing Make, CMake, Maison, or Ninja. Is that something that you are interested in? A comparison between these different build system? Then leave a comment in the comment section. And let's go on with the core utils. Let's install those. After we have unpacked it, we actually need to patch it as well. Uh, so there's a patch for core util. And in order to get that patch, we need to go one directory further down like that. So now we have patched it up. So it um, re requires it to re recognize character boundaries correctly in the multiple locales. Um, so they, it didn't really uh, use the Unicode system correctly. So that's what this patch is fixing. We also need to suppress a text uh, which can loop forever on some machines. So that lock test, we will remove that. Now we will uh, run the auto reconf FIV in order to prepare the build system. And as we talked about earlier, auto reconf will run all these different tools, AC local and auto make and so on in order to prepare the system for a build and create the actual configuration uh, script that we will need to use later. Uh, so we see here that it ran AC local. Now it's running the AC config script. It's running AC auto config with the force flag in order to prepare that, then auto header and so on. So the core utils package contains utils for showing and setting the basic system characteristics. So what kind of uh, things can that be? We have the base name for um, which removes the path of a file and gives you the actual uh, just a uh, file name. So you remove the path. And this was done, so let's run the configure script before I continue here. Uh, so first we have this variable uh, name where forces unsafe configuration. Um, and why do we do that? Uh, allows the package to be built as a, use, a root user. Okay, so we can't run it ad, uh, as a root user anyway. Or we are a root user. And then we will build it to the USR there and enable no install program kill uptime. So this is the purpose of this switch is to prevent core utils from installing binaries that will be installed by other packages later. So kill and uptime is something that we will get some other way. So uh, we don't need to install that now. And uh, after that we want to make this with the unsafe flag as well. So let's continue here. Uh, other comma commands we get is cat. So we can concatenate files to standard out. So we can actually read files. It's really nice. We have ch group, ch mod, ch own and ch root. Uh, these are commands that we have used. We have used them to change group, change uh, the flags on different files and change ownerships and also change into the root um, environment that we use now. Uh, we also have CP for copy files. We have DD that we use to write blocks and that could be useful to um, flash uh, some uh, drive or remove things It's or do a bit by bit copy from one hard drive to another. Very useful. We have the date command with DF to see how much uh, usage you have on the different drives that you run or the different petitions. Uh, we have dir which uh, looks at the directory, the same as ls. We have dir colors which will set colors for the directory. 
we will have du which will can can look into a directory structure give you back how large it is and summarize that and show it in a human fashion so you can actually uh, look at a file and see or a directory and see how large it is very useful we have the env uh, so we can see uh, what environment flags we have we have the echo command in here for displaying strings uh, we have what other things do I usually use we I've used ID to see the current user we have used install to install things with the, rec the correct permissions we have run ln to do links between things we were done done there so let's uh, go on and do a make here with this parameter so let's continue looking at this list there is so many programs in this core util um, ls as i talked about list a, cur a current directory uh, make dir to make directories um, make nod and make uh, FIFO, we have used that in this tutorial as well. Make temp to make temporary files in a secure manner. Move MV. Nice, it will actually run a command. This uh, program, nice, will run another command in a nice fashion. So it will not to take too much system resources. So if another program needs more system resources, it will back off which is really nice and we have let's see here what have i used before rm to remove files and directories and uh, we have some showing uh, function here to actually make checksums uh, we have sleep so we can pause in a bash script for instance so it uh, will not run too fast um, we have tail to actually uh, tail log files and continuously read a log file and get information back. We have T that will read uh, a standard input and write both standard output and to a file, which is very useful. We have uh, TR, which truncates, squeezes, and deletes a given character from standard input. We have truncate, which will squeeze the file size to a specific file a specific size uh, we have uname to get system information what user is running what uh, kernel is running and so on very useful and we have users so we can see which users are logged in at the moment we have dz and that could be used to count lines in a file and so on very useful as well. Who, uh, how, who, or who am I can check when, when, which is the current user at the moment, and so on. So there is many good programs in this package. So core utils is something that is required, something that you really need, and something that you really want. Uh, so I will wait for this to build. I think it's actually um, getting close to the end here it's creating demand pages for all the packages maybe that is the last step here and uh, yeah so it's done so now we have made it and now we can uh, run the test suit first test are meant to be run as root uh, so let's do that so we can see that everything is set up correctly and that passed then we have the, the rest we need to run as nobody so we will create let's see here we will create a dummy user in the group file we will change ownership of this directory to nobody and then we will run the make test 
with nobody uh, as we have done before. So this is running the tests with the user nobody instead. And that should not take that much time. It's the same test that we ran earlier, but as the user nobody, so we can see that that actually works. There is a caveat here that the test program get login is known to fail in particular build system environment like CROT, chroot environments here, but passes if run at the end of this chapter. So that doesn't really matter for me. <laughs> If it is just that test that fails, that's fine. Then we know that we have a working system. And as because this is very important that we get all of these uh, right, because these are the system binaries that we're using very commonly. Uh, I think it's important to run these tests, but if there is a known test to fail, then we know that. So we can accept that test. So I will wait for this to be done and I'll get back to you. And we are back and we have run all the 294 tests and they seem to work. So now we need to remove that temporary group that we created earlier and we need to make install to get this, these core utils installed in our system so we can start using all these good good tools now after that we need to copy some programs over first we have cat group the uh, c group c mod c own cp date dd df and echo should be in bin instead of usr bin i'm not sure if all of them should be but some of them um, yeah, yeah, not in US Airbnb. Correct, we should move those down. Same goes for some more. And even more <laughs> commands. And last but not least, we will move the ch root into sbin. So that's for the super user. And we will also move the ch root from manual 1 to manual 8. So it's on the right directory and we also need to update it so it has an 8 in the actual file instead of a 1. So now that we have moved all those files over so they are in the correct directory instead of the user directory, we have them in the core system. We also have some scripts in the LFS boot. Uh, script packet depend on head, nice, sleep and touch. So we need to move those over as well. So there we go. Those are now in the bin directory. So everything is where it should be. I think we have done a lot here and this video will be broken into smaller parts and uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Linux and different components of Linux. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.